friends, and welcome to Turtle King Gaming, and back to If My Heart Had Wings. I am terribly sorry. I am, My nose is leaking. It's disgusting. And I'm sneezing because my nose is leaking. So, if I have to pause the sneeze, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> oh, it kind of smells moldy, doesn't it? Oh, yes, just a little. Oh well, that must be because it's raining. Perhaps. I think it's because this place is old, though. Besides, it's creaking because of the typhoon. Doesn't it feel like it's going to fall apart? Uh, yeah, maybe. Let's give up on this place. The food at home is delicious, and Grandpa. Ah, here's the room. <laughs> What's this? I wonder, is it? Could it be? As a as I reached the second floor, the two of them were standing there, staring blankly at the glider inside. Yeah, sorry. We're just looking after this. There's no leak, is there? Uh... Oh, you're right. It looks like someone fixed it, I guess. Did you lie in order to keep this hidden from us? Uh, yes, that's right. I quickly owned up to it. I mean, we're bust we're fucking busted. It seems like there was no use lying to this girl. But why is there something like this in this kind of place? After all, this is... A glider, isn't it? So you know what it is? I forgot the situation for a moment and accidentally answered their question. Also, I was rather happy as I did so. Gliders are a little known form of transportation and not many people have actually seen one. Not only that, this one is currently dismantled. You know, I... Was this by any chance stolen from the school? Huh? Uh, we didn't steal it. We paid for that shit. Is Aoi up there? I don't know. Was it really alright for us to do something like that? We had no choice! If we didn't- If we hadn't done it, it would have been taken to the museum! Why? It's fucking ours! It belongs to the Soaring Club! Screw those people! If that happened, we'd never be able to get back! That glider was inherited from Amane! Oh. I'm getting a phone call. Sorry. Hold on. Okay, back. Sorry. The glider is what we inherited from Amane! Yeah, it is. So is that the case? As your Yoru seems to find my attitude even more unusual, she becomes more determined to find out the truth. Back then, when the soaring club was shut down, when the garage was forcefully taken away from us and demolished, the glider was no longer inside. It had been moved to another place. After that, under the school's instruction, it was ke kept in the storeroom. We wanted to get it back quickly, but since there was no way we could fly it and we didn't have anywhere to put it, we kept quiet and let the school take care of it. Then, a few days ago, we heard some surprising news from certain sources. The school was trying to have the glider donated to the city museum. Screw them! It doesn't belong to them! We paid for that crap! This glider was made by the old members of the club, and an original aircraft like this is extremely rare in this country. Therefore, it has, some va has value as something to be collected by a museum. To the school, it was seen as a waste of storage space, and they wanted to dispose of it. If it had gone to the museum, we would have never been able to have gotten it back. They still have no right to give it away. As an extreme measure, we decided to steal, I mean, take it away, in secret. And that's the reason why it's here now. Yes, that's correct. If I lied, I'd soon be found out. I admitted it honestly. I must say I'm surprised that it would be hidden in a place like this. Is that the reason why you didn't, don't want us to live here? No, I heard you were coming tomorrow and I was planning on moving it somewhere before then. Is that so? Unfortunately, we were still in the middle of a huge typhoon. The only place where it might be able to store a great big glider like this would be the entranceway. However, given the circumstances, we wouldn't want to leave it anywhere so noticeable. Please, you must keep this a secret. I put both hands together like I'm praying. We told you just now that we are the granddaughters of the chairman of the board, didn't we? 
Why would we want to do something like betray our grandfather for your sake? I, I like it here. Sis, Asa seemed to like she was full of determination as she made her statement. I like it here, Yoru. Weren't you just listening, sis? This thing was stolen from the school. Yes, but even so, I like it here. I'm sorry. Asa begged her sister Yoru, who seemed to be both scolding her and yet astonished at the same time. Hey, sis, first of all, if this thing is in here, we won't have anywhere to sleep. It's okay, I can do this! Asa laid her petite body in the gap between the fuselage and the main wings that were leaning against the wall. Count me out. But we have to stay here today. The whole building shook and rattled as it was battered by strong winds. There's a typhoon outside. <sighs> Even so, I don't think that this place is very safe. It also seems rather unsanitary. Well, screw you, bitch. We haven't cleaned this room yet. If it ends like this, our secret will be found out. That our glider is here. So, as of today, the two of you are our friends. Let's all get along together. <laughs> what? Okay, let's have a round of applause, I say as I forcefully encourage everyone to clap. Everyone looked at my twitching smile with a dubious look on their faces and gave two a round of applause. Owie? Owie? Your face is twitching! We've been busted. It's great to meet you all! Well, I guess we can get along. Your attitude stinks! Is this alright, Yuka? That kid has a really bad attitude. She's also a freshman! So we gotta tell her what's what! Katori makes a real fuss about it while everyone just replies with a hum. I can't say, hmm, with a stuffed up nose, apparently. <laughs> We've already gotten used to it. Gotten used to it? How come? Everyone gives her a sideways look as if to say, well... To be honest, you are ten times worse, Katori. What? It would be better if you just introduced yourself properly and say nice to meet you. Katori looks at Ageha and me like she's looking for backup. Same here. Same here. She's surrounded by opposing opinions on all sides. What are you doing, you guys? My attitude was never that bad! But what are we gonna do about the room? That room is... Yuka mumbles unintelligibly. We received implicit agreement from the boarders that we could hide the glider in the dormitory. They highly valued my achievement of getting the new fridge and understood our feelings as former members of the story club, so they turned a blind eye to the whole incident. That's why, supposedly, they have decided to pretend that they don't know what is here. Oh, my neck. We'll search for another place to store it as quickly as possible. Until then, you two can use my room. Everyone made a face as if to say, is that okay? I don't have many things, so I can easily clear the space, so you can sleep anywhere you like. Okay, you can come to my room. Let's sleep together. Hey, Kana, what the hell are you talking about? You can't tell him, let him do something like that! Oh, why not? That's, uh, okay, how you tell her? What does that have to do with me? It's kind of like this. If Aoi was involved in any kind of misconduct, he would have to quit his dorm mother. Yes, yes, that's it! <laughs> Plus, I'm sure you don't sleep just in your underwear. Everyone says things like, yeah, or that would be a problem for us. Which is why that proposal is reje rejected. I don't need to say things like proposal rejected. It's not like this is some business discussion. Asa spoke nervously. I, uh, don't mind staying in the room with the glider, you know? But there's nowhere to lay a futon. Uh, I'm fine. I'm prepared to do that. Everyone looks at her like they're saying, what on earth is she talking about? Wait. That's right, her eyes lit up when she was looking at the glider just now. Does she have some sort of emotional attachment to it? For example, she might be some sort of airplane nerd. 
I'm not doing it. I'd suffocate if I slept in such a cramped space. You're I said I'm out. There's no way I'm doing it. Well, you can use my room. Is that okay? Yes. For some reason, she nodded reluctantly. So that's that, everyone. It's just for a little while, so I appreciate your cooperation. Pardon my stuff, please. This is my room. Okay, we're coming in. Yoru, this is a boy's room. Yes, it is. The two of them nervously looked around my room. He's got so many manga books! I guess boys really like man manga. Manga. Ooh, I can't talk with my nose all stuffed up. Don't don't they? As Asa, impressed but all of them were brought here by Ageha, so had or who had just left them there after reading them, so they're not mine. There are crumbs from snacks everywhere. They're not mine either. It's because Ageha and Katori have been eating it here. Since the garage was demolished, my room has become our meeting place. That's why there are so many things here that I have no recollection of. Sorry, I'll tidy up soon. I clear away the trash and put all the unneeded objects out in the hallway. While I'm doing that, they just idly stand there waiting. Those two, they've been treating my room like a place to leave all their stuff. After coming and going several times, I see Asa holding a photo frame that was on the desk. This photo... I peek over the heads of the two sisters who have their faces close together. It's pretty easy to do that, because even for girls, they're pretty short. Oh, that photo. It was the glider and the runway overgrown with weeds. The blue sky stretching out in all directions. The shining white clouds bathed in the sunlight. Then, there is our group. It was taken on the day that I had come back from the last test flight with Amane. It was a commemorative photo. This is the glider you saw just now. That's what it looks like when it's all put together. Both of them, especially Asa, looked enthusiastically at the photograph. When was the photo taken? Around the end of last year's summer holiday, we flew the glider at dawn. Strange clouds called Morning Glory appear, and that's what we were aiming for. So, it was you guys flying that time. But you failed, didn't you? How'd you know? I wonder. Katori, Akeha, and Aoi. That's right, isn't it? Oh. She points to the faces uh, in the photo one by one. Who is this? Uh, who is this pretty one here? The last person in the photo she points to is the one in the picture with a carefree smile like a little kid. That's Amani Machizuki. Also known as the Super Repeat Student. She's already graduated, though. Uh, that's the person that Katori was talking about before. Yes, that's her. The genius who is so smart she forgets that she's hungry. I add as I laugh at how strange that is. The legendary senior. Legendary? Well, maybe that's true. Maybe the students of Keifu Academy will continue to tell the story of Amani Machizuki, the strange senior, for a long time to come. Just like an urban legend. I narrow my eyes as I smile from the feelings of nostalgia as I look at the photo. The two of them look at my, me curiously from below. Something happened and the club lost its status, but originally we were the members of the Sorin Club. This photo is the last memorial picture of our club's activities. Have you stopped your club activities now? Well, we're still kind of continuing them. Now we've gone completely underground. We're not recognized by the school, and we carry out our activities in secret so we don't get found out. Asa, are you interested in gliders? <laughs> no, I... She goes bright red as she looks down. My sister is interested in flying. She has been for a very long time. Yeah... I see. We're planning to fly again soon, so you can come and watch if you like. Okay! She's adorable! <laughs> Asa's big round eyes sparkled as she nodded happily. When the sun went down, the mother of all storms blew outside, so we couldn't go out and there was or there to do any repairs. We all we could do now was pray that the old dormitory could withstand it and wait for the typhoon to pass. And no more windows just blow away. 
Hey, that girl also seems to be pretty interested in gliders. Oh, really? I was telling Ageha, who was helping me make dinner, about the twins. Because it looks like she won't be able to go home tonight, it seems that Ageha will be staying in Katori's room. I asked her if she'd like to come and see us fly next time. Her eyes sparkled as she said okay. That's great, isn't it? You've, you've been checking them out the whole time. Isn't that cute? No, I don't mean it like that. That's not what... Or, oh, that's what they call lollycon, isn't it? Oh, it's because they're freshmen. That's right, because we're juniors. And I guess they're young. I d I don't know. Katori, who had been quietly chopping the vegetables, joined in the conversation. You idiot, what the hell do you mean? They're not- uh, uh, they're only two years younger than me. That's not Lollycon! Is it? Actually, I don't know a whole lot. I, as far as I was aware, it's the attraction to females who wear clothes like a little kid. But I don't know if that's like... You're actually attracted to the little kids? Like the whole idea of the little kid, or just the fact that this girl is dressed up like a little kid. I don't know. I don't, I don't know about, enough about the culture to make a decision on that. There's also apparently one opposite at, that I've totally forgotten the name of again. I found it out one time that where it's the same thing, but for, like, boyish type guys. I don't know. E stretch. Owie! A girl like that would be good. Aoi, you're good at looking after people, so you'd be a sucker for someone who needs a lot of attention. She says as she looks from Katori to, or at Katori from the side. Katori doesn't notice her looking as she mumbles things like, That's so cute, isn't it? While chopping up the cabbage. We couldn't go shopping that night, so we were making... Okonomiyaki. A fried omelet type thing from the food we had left over. Anyway, can you guys take all back all the manga and other things that you left in my room? If you don't, I'm going to throw them out. Hey, hey I was lending them to you. You don't read them. That's or You should read them. They're really interesting. Then we can have exciting discussions about them. That's exactly my friend James is that way, where he's like, you have to do this thing so that we can geek out about these things together. Okay, if I have time. Hey, how much of an age gap do you think it would be or be for it to be called Lollycon? Forget about that. Just chop the vegetables, will you? <laughs> You're thinking about weird things again, Katori. The raging storm shook Flying Fish Banner. I like how they're all like try like they all like me, but they're all trying to pair me up with other people. But it's also really insulting because it's like they obviously can't see me with them. I don't know. Hey, are you really planning on living here? Yeah, because... Of the glider? This must be destiny! You think so too, don't you, Yoru? Destiny is just a load of nonsense. Sis, you're such a romanticist. That's alright, isn't it? I don't care if you never understand how I feel. It's more girly to be a romanticist. Yeah, yeah. I'm not that girly anyway. Also, there's something else that I thought was good. What's that? Seval. Everyone smiles so happily to be aiming for the sky. Wow! The, the wind is really strong. The building might come crashing down while we're sleeping. Don't scare your sister! Yoyu! Let's sleep together! Whatever shall we do? Yoru! <laughs> Goober. Hey, this one had letters on it. Same quote again. Really sucks. Okay. The next day, the typhoon had passed and a blue sky spread over Kazagura. So that's why we asked for your favorable consideration, President! Please consider it. Please. Standing behind Katori, we bow our heads. This is the fourth grade classroom. Yesterday we were ordered to go to the student council room, so we decided to take the initiative and go to Akira's classroom. 
Akari. I don't know why I said Akira. We state the, the matter frankly. We are making an application for the revival of the Sword Club. It was a negotiation to restore the Sword Club which lost its status last year. That matter has already been rejected, Katori. But that was under the previous student council, right? We thought you might have a different ideas. The title of leader of the Story Club Society isn't just a decoration. For a year, Katori has been negotiating with the student council for the revival of the Story Club. However, the previous student council president had said that I don't think that Mr. Tobioko would allow it. Yeah, screw that guy. That was a typical example of someone who is afraid of to ro afraid to rock the boat. The previous student council was dissolved, and in the election held a few days ago, Akar Akari was chosen as the new student council president. In her case, she might actually listen to what we have to say, so Katori's finally had grounds for negotiation. Akari was deep in thought as she stared at the application petition for the revival of the club. We watched over her with tense expressions. Come on, you'll be cool with us, right? If it isn't officially recognized as a club, there are a few circumstances that could spell trouble for us. First is the issue of our ownership of the glider. That is property of the Soaring Club, so if it becomes a club again, it should be officially recognized as being under our ownership. It was built using club funds, which is why it was taken away by the school, along with the club's status. Except the club's funds came from Amani. In actuality, over half of the funds for construction were paid for by Amani herself. There was also the problem of the club's funds. Currently, we are facing a serious shortage of funds. The parts of the materials come from Ageha and Katori helping out at Anjan's place, but the transport cost for Ageha and I to go to the airfield and the cost of the flight training is no joke. Our intention is for, to use the funds to help cover these costs, even if only by a little. Another thing, the fact that we can't use the school facilities. For the manufacturing of the parts, even if we want to use the school's equipment, they won't give us permission. Everyone just uses it freely, but with Mr. Tobioka, Keeping an eye on us being found out could cause problems. Lastly, we don't have anywhere to conduct our activities. As a result, we had to occupy the room used by the Kasato sisters. We can't continue the use of the dormitory as our base of operations. Please, Mr. Council President, you know that we are serious about carrying out our club's activities. That's right! The Keifo, to Keifo Academy, there's no other club which has such fitting club activities, don't you think? Everyone was desperately pleading with her, but... Before that... Akari stared at us with a scary expression on her face. There's something I want to ask you all. It's about the glider that disappeared from the storeroom. Her voice dropped down a tone. That alone was enough to make us cower in fear. Whatever could you mean? Even if we were totally busted, we have no choice but to play dumb. Akari is usually a fair person, but she won't be that flexible. If we, it was clear that we had taken it away, she would definitely have to take action. Someone snuck into the storeroom and stole the glider that was being kept there. I wonder who could carry out such an enormous thing as that. The way she said it makes it sound like she was implying, I know it was you. She's completely right, though. The thing with the glider was a huge miscalculation on our part. We knew that it would be a big disadvantage when it came to applying for the restoration of the club. Oh, excuse me. But it could be avoided. Knowing that this would happen, we came to her first to negotiate. Could it be some kind of geek? Like an airplane geek? Maybe they really wanted it, no matter what. As I desperately tried to give a suitable answer, Akari looks towards me. You're saying it wasn't you? It wasn't. No way. No. I answer while choking on my words. My heart feels heavy as Akari's eyes, full of righteousness, shoot a gaze right through me. Very well. However, if it is made clear that you have been committing any form of misconduct, there's no way I could defend you, so be warned. Okay. Without thinking, I answered honestly, and again, I gave me a poke in the ribs. That was like say, actually, we stole it. Even so, it was arranged that it would be donated to the museum next week. This seems like a very good timing, doesn't it? Said Akari as she caught a glimpse of our expressions. It seems like she'd like to know about that. 
about who leaked the information to us. Uh, Akari! At that moment, Mamo appeared, calling out in a frivolous voice. What time does today's student council meeting start? 4 p.m., says Matsugo. I can't, I can't. So, you're free until then. You want to go somewhere for a cup of tea? Ooh. What are you guys doing here? What happened to your girlfriend? That bonehead, Mamo, he's only just realized we're here. What are you doing here? We came to apply for the restoration of the club. So you can just get the hell out of here. Uh, what's with that attitude? I'm a member of the student council. Mamo sticks his chest out with, in a patronizing kind of way. Oh yeah, that's right. He joined the student council this year as its secretary. In response to Masatsuko, Akari glared at him. Well, what's the problem, Akari? We were having an important conversation right now. It's about the glider being stolen. Ah, uh, uh, okay. I thought that it was strange from the very beginning that it would be stolen just before it was about to be donated to the museum. If we assume that the culprit was a regular student, how would they have gotten that information? Uh, well, just how did they do that? I'm not so clever. I don't really understand it. <laughs> it's so bad at this. Okay, how and I look at each other. Isn't there a better way we can try to trick her? Akari seems convinced that this poor attempt at deceiving her and uh, seemed convinced by this poor attempt at deceiving her and didn't pursue it any farther. She's she's trying very hard, but oh, we lie so badly. For the time being, it's good that she didn't find the perpetrator who leaked the information. By the way, this is kind of beside the point, but it looks like Mamo has broken up with his girlfriend, who he was in a band with. According to him, the reason was because of musical differences. Bull honky, she's a controlling bitch. According to Ageha, he got dumped. After that, we met the girl that he was destined to be with. An older girl called her called Akari Kamoi. Of course. Then, in order to chase after her, he joined the student council. That's the end of this little side story. As for the club having lost its status, as we have discussed before, I feel sympathetic to your cause, but there's nothing I can do about it. Right after Armani left, it was decided the staff, in a staff meeting that the club would have its status repealed without any notification, and then the garage was forcibly taken from us and demolished. This was all under the instruction of Mr. Tobioka. Some of the students were against it, but Mr. Tobioka went ahead and forced it to be demolished. See, that's a dictatorship, not a democracy. The reason was that this had been promised from the beginning. Actually, I don't approve of it either. The condition for the club losing its status was simply that there was no other members besides Senior Machizuki. Whereas, in fact, all of you guys were there too. In spite of that, it was decided the club's status would be repealed just for the convenience of the teaching staff. That is a malicious infringement on the anonymy, uh, on autonomy of the student council. Yeah, like... Uh, don't tell us we have choices and then take them away from us when we don't make the choice you want. If I had the student council president, if I had been the student council president at that time, I would have put up more of a fight. She spoke with her fist clenched and a furrowed brow, and she looked genuinely frustrated. She won't forgive those who selfishly ignore the rules, even if they're teachers. So that's what happened. She's the one who, when all is said and done, was working hard to help the story club to survive by putting pressure on Amane, who had been continuing with the club all by herself. At the time, when the club was in danger of being shut down, she's strict, but really, she's a good person. So please, allow our revival! Yes, President, the discussion to repeal the status should never have been made. Or the decision, not the discussion. This was our big chance to make ourselves heard, but Akari shook her head. Why not? Because it doesn't fulfill the conditions of being a club. First, you don't have enough members. Now there are only three members. To be a club, you need at least four members. Next, there's the validity of the club's activities. Well, there are no problems there. This is about whether or not the club activities are sustainable for a, are suitable for a student club. There's no problem as far as that goes. There is a lack of qualified personnel, and that is a serious problem. Uh, if you're talking about a pilot's license, oh, he's got one! That's not enough, though, is it? 
As well as the pilot, you also need qualifications for the equipment. Things like gliders cannot be administered without qualified personnel. Before, Marty held all of the necessary qualifications, so it wasn't a problem. Finally, there's the absence of an advisor. Mr. Yamanobi, who had until last year been the advisor, withdrew from the story club, or withdrew when the story club lost its status. He was under close scrutiny for Mr. Tobioka, so and had to deal with a super problem child like Amari Machizuki. So it was no wonder a third of his hair had gone white, despite being actually being quite young. He's timid, but a decent guy, and a good teacher, though. If you can't solve all the aforementioned problems, there's no way I can accept your application. You're so stingy! Stingy? Angry. Even if the student council allows it, Mr. Tobioka won't allow it, would he? The way she spoke was quite genuine, but what she really meant was there's no way Mr. Tobioka will let this slide if you can't fulfill the minimum conditions. He, if we can't make it to where he can't argue, she can't help us. It's fair. In other words, you're saying it's not entirely impossible. Akari nods. If you can beat these conditions, we in the student council will negotiate with the teaching staff. With a look on her face that said, this is what is being fair is all about, Akari reasserted us. Thank you so much, President. Oh, I can't breathe. We bow as we make our way out of the fourth grade classroom. Make sure that glider isn't found, okay? Okay! Uh... <laughs> you're so honest. As I emphatically, uh, em empathically reply, Akari treated it as a joke and paid no one attention. <laughs> She's great! <laughs> I didn't think you guys would actually go ahead and steal it! <laughs> That's not why I told you! Anywho's, I have to cut it there, so <laughs> we'll get into this tomorrow. Until then, peace out, y'all!